Last time we were doing uh, this nice example of continuous random variable which is called Buffon's uh, needle problem. So, on an infinite floor there are parallel lines let us say 1 centimeter apart and you drop a needle of some length L centimeters. So, the needle falls in a random orientation and the random variable of interest is number of intersections with the lines on the floor. Okay. So, what is the expectation of this random variable? So, we argued that this is nothing but an application of linearity of expectation. Okay. So, you can actually break the needle into smaller parts as small as you like and then uh, independently calculate the expectation for that part. So, then the needle actually stops being a needle you can think of it as any figure and we agreed that we will look at it as a circle okay, because circle has the advantage that wherever it falls the number of intersections does not change. So, so last time uh, we saw that if we drop a circle of diameter 1, so circle of diameter equal to the distance between the lines which is 1 centimeter always gives two intersections. Right. So, if it falls uh, directly in the middle of the two lines then it, it gives you these as tangent points if it falls somewhere else then you get an intersection with a single line. So, it is always 2 and uh, what this means is uh, expectation of this circle intersection let us call it x prime right this is fixed it is just 2 where the length is length is equal to the circumference right. So, it is 2 pi r, r is half. So, it is pi. So, for pi centimeter long needle you expect intersections to be always 2 which means that expectation of that random variable original one for L centimeter length this is L by pi times 2. So, that finishes the problem. So, for a needle of length 1 centimeter you expect 2 by pi as the expected number of intersections. Okay, so, this is an amazing application of uh, linearity of expectation. Okay. I wanted to do one more uh, random variable which is famous, but before that let us continue with uh, another example. Okay. Let us uh, do another probability example which is important in computer science. So, let us see an example that is very useful in computer science. and this will be equality checking protocol. So, here the setting is there are two uh, players Alice and Bob physically they are separated. So, they have some channel of communication and they have files. So, they uh, Alice has a file A and Bob has a file B. 
okay, and there is a channel of communication between them both ways. So, let us write that down. So, Alice has each file is n bits long. Okay, so, generally n is very large, right. Usually files are thousands and millions of bits long. So, n is some large number. So, uh, Alice would not want to send this the whole file through the channel. So, what you have to do is design a communication protocol to test whether A and B are the same files okay, by sending as few bits as possible. Okay, so, few bits is the uh, parameter to optimize in this question. The number of bits which is sent that should be as few as possible. So, obviously brute force is just uh, Alice sends the whole file. Right, but then number of bits will be n. So, you want to do it better than this. So, can you manage this by, can Alice manage uh, equality checking in bits much smaller than n? Actually, even n minus 1 is not clear at this point. So, what is clear is deterministically you cannot improve this. Right. So, it seems very hard to create a deterministic, to design a deterministic protocol which uh, requires much less than n bits to be transferred and still A and B equality gets tested. So, let us give a probabilistic protocol. So, we give a probabilistic one. using number theory. Okay, which seems uh, suspicious. So, how can you use number theory in this problem? This is just a question about bits, right? Just random files uh, or arbitrary files. So, the idea will be to actually see file A as a number. Okay. So, let us design a protocol based on that. So, turn A into number N A, just the number that whose bit representation, binary representation this is. So, which is A i is the ith bit 2 raise to i, i is n minus 1, 0 to n minus 1, right? That is the number which the file A represents. Second, pick a random prime P in some range, okay? I am not telling you the range. Let us just use this. Uh, placeholder t. So, 1 to t pick a prime number. So, the prime can be 2, it can be 3, it can be 5, it can be 7. 
and so on okay so immediately the question arises that how many primes are there in this interval 1 to t right so that we will have to handle later let us continue with the protocol so the main step in the protocol is uh, computing a residue na mod p okay so this is uh, p was uh, at most t so it's log t bits so the residue is only log t bits okay so if you pick t to be small then these are few bits so you have basically uh, mapped the big file n bit file to few bits just log t bits and then you send this residue ra and the prime p to bob right so this again is only two log t bits so it's very few amount of bits small amount of bits which have been sent over the channel and then bob checks whether ra is equal to rb okay bob can do that because bob has the prime uh, number p so and he obviously has the file b so he computes this integer rb reduces this finds the residue mod p and checks whether the residue is the same so obviously you output yes if and only if r a is r b right that is the output if r a and r b are different then clearly the files were different but if these residues are the same can you say with confidence that the files were the same right because they there might not be enough information in r a r b so they may be the same files may be different so that error probability we have to calculate so what is the minimum t that will work to get a good success probability right so that's our goal it's so to really fix the algorithm we have to do an analysis find t fix t and then also say what is the confidence that we have given r a is equal to r b with how much confidence can we say a equal to b so let us do the analysis so first thing that you have to learn is how many primes are there how many primes are there till t so this is number of primes in the set 1 to t and that is around t over log t so that is a deep uh, question i will not resolve it here uh, in case you don't know you look at the density of primes okay there is prime number theorem look at that so that says uh, number of primes will be t over log t which is uh, if you look at the density it is 1 over log t so as t grows the density really falls but uh, still its uh, number of primes is actually not that bad okay it's a good density and definitely as this says there are infinitely many primes right there is no uh, dearth of primes 
Okay, so other property is that uh, probability that R A is equal to R B in case A is equal to B, the files are equal, that is certainly 1. Right? If the files are the same, the numbers are the same, so the residues are the same, they cannot be different. Now let us look at the case when A and B are different. The files are different, then what is happening? Right? In that case, we want to evaluate the chance that residues are different. If the residues are the same, that is an error. So if files are different, then the numbers are different. Right? The number cannot be the same because it was just the binary representation. And it has this number has at most how many prime factors? So that will be log of this number's value. Right. This is a non-zero number and uh, if you look at the its absolute value, take the log, the number of primes cannot be more than this. Prime factors. Because if it has more than, if it has n prime factors, then each prime factor is obviously at least 2. So the prime factors are 2, 3, 5, 7, they, all of them are at least 2, so you will get 2 raised to n, which is a number that is bigger than this, the difference, right? So small number, I mean this number has magnitude at more, less than 2 raised to n, so it cannot have more than n prime factors. So there are few prime factors, okay? So what does it say for about the probability? So this says that... Uh, probability that Ra, residue of A and residue of B are the same given that the uh, numbers were different, the files were different, right? This is equal to the number of prime factors of Na minus Nb. divided by the number of primes in this universe 1 to t, right? So this is less than n and number of primes we are calling pi t. So pi t we said is uh, around t over log t, right? So let us put that. So that is the error probability, n log t by t. So let us take n to be a fixed t to be 4 n square log n. Because if you fix t to be this, then the error probability becomes 1 by n. So this is n log n times log t, log t is log of 4 n square plus log log n divided by 4 n square log n. So this is less than n times. So the dominating term is like 2 log n or slightly more. So let us say 3, 3 log n divided by 4 n square log n. Right, which is less than 1 by n. So this becomes the error probability 1 by n. So what we have shown is that the protocol transmits log t or 2 log t, which is uh, 
log t is what? Log n, right? So, it is order log n many bits and succeeds with probability greater than 1 minus 1 over n. So, if n is uh, millions, thousands and millions of uh, bits, then this success probability is almost 100 percent. Okay, so, by sending only log n many bits, you are able to get success almost 100 percent. Right? So, this is an amazing protocol, especially note the optimality of this. This is really an optimal algorithm because uh, note that log n bits are needed to even index a bit in file A. Right. So, file A has n bits. So, if you want to just locate a bit, that location already takes log n bits just to address, just to point a bit. And around that much uh, space, you are able to check the equality of A and B. Right. So, this protocol is amazingly efficient. Right. So, that is a very good example of the use of probability. And uh, so, yeah, with this let me finish up with, uh, uh, with the last uh, famous or important random variable. So, what you have seen till now in the discrete setting were four ra random variables. Bernoulli binomial, geometric and negative binomial. The last you will see is Poisson. So, this is number 5 in discrete random variables, it is called Poisson. random variable. So, what is this? So, it is uh, best described by an example, because if I give you the formula, uh, it will not make any sense. So, let me describe this by an example. It is a very natural setting. So, suppose look at cell phone calls. So, suppose phone calls uh, satisfy the two properties as follows. So, one is uh, that number of calls in a time interval. are proportional to the length of the interval. Okay, this is completely natural, uh, maybe not in the night, but during the day, let us say 12 to 1 pm, it is completely natural that uh, or let us say 12 to 4 pm, it is natural that if you pay, if you look at a 12 to 1 and then you look at 12 to 2, then the number of phone calls should double. right? So, number of calls proportional to length and uh, second is number of calls 
in uh, disjoint intervals are independent. So, what this is saying is that uh, uh, the number of calls you see 12 to 1 pm and the ones you see 2 to 3 pm, uh, they are independent, which again seems to be reasonable because these are different uh, times. So, why should there be a correlation between the two? Right? I mean, if you look at the whole country, then there should not be any correlation. Maybe in an office, there is some correlation. But uh, across uh, a big sample space, geographically distributed, there should not be any correlation. So, these are the two things you can uh, assume about phone calls. And now, so say alpha is the expected number of calls in the time duration or interval 12 to 1 pm. And x is the number of calls, so it is a random variable, it is the number of calls in 12 to 12 15 pm or let me use the same time. So, the question is what is the probability that x is equal to k? Okay, so, x is a random variable its expected value is alpha, but uh, what is the probability that it is k? And k is some number 0, 1, 2, 3, right. So, what is this function? We are interested in this function. So, this seems very tricky. I mean, you know the expect, you, you can uh, cal calculate the expected number of calls by taking averages every day, right. But now, you have, you want to make a prediction for the, let us say next week, next week, some day. 12 to 1 pm, what are the, uh, what is the probability that number of calls is k, right. So, assuming these two properties, this can be worked out beautifully. So, let us see, this should surprise you. So, those two properties make the calls continuous in nature. So, because of the continuous nature of calls, we divide the interval into uh, n discrete parts. Okay, so, think of n as something very large and then in one part only one phone call can come. What is the probability of that phone call? actually being made. So, that probability by the continuous uh, nature or by these two properties, the phone call in a part is alpha by n, right. Alpha was there in that one hour, then you divide that one hour into n parts in each part a phone call actually being made is alpha by n. So, if in one hour there were 10 phone calls and you divide this into 20 parts, then uh, yeah, then in one part the probability of a call being made is half, right. That is why in 20, summing over 20 you will get 10. It cannot be more, it cannot be less. So, so this seems intuitively correct and that is your probability p.
Okay, so let us now do the calculation of what we want, which is x equal to k. So that is uh, in n you want k parts to be active. So that's n choose k many ways. In k call happens, in n minus k does not happen. So in k you want p raised to k probability or you have p raised to k probability otherwise it is 1 minus p to the n minus k probability. So what is that? So that is n dot dot n minus k plus 1 by k factorial p is alpha to the n uh, alpha by n to the k and 1 minus alpha by n to the n minus k. Let us rearrange. So, you will get uh, 1 minus 1 by n dot dot 1 minus k minus 1 by n and alpha to the k by k factorial and these two things. So now, obviously there is no good number n, right? n can be taken to be anything, you can take it to be 1 second, but then it is also if the population is large then it is possible that actually in half a second there is a call. So you can take it to be half a second or you can take it to be 1 millisecond. So essentially n is uh, infinity, okay? n is tending to infinity. So in that case what is this expression? So limit of this as n tends to infinity is the first whole part is 1 alpha to the k by k factorial does not they do not I mean it would not change 1 minus alpha by n to the n. So recall your uh, calculus so this is e to the minus alpha in the limit and uh, the last thing is 1 minus 0 so it is just 1 right. So what you get is alpha to the k by k factorial e raised to minus alpha that is the answer okay. So the probability that uh, k calls will be made is given by this okay. So that is a weird expression right let us uh, let us try to see some properties. First property of this expression is if you look at uh, probability going over all the k's, then what do you get? So e raised to minus alpha, alpha to the k by k factorial. So this expression is actually e raised to minus alpha times e raised to alpha, right? The definition of e raised to alpha is this expression. So you get one, okay? And uh, second is uh, you can also calculate the expectation of x. So this we'll do next. Thank you.